السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين uh, Today inshallah uh, we will talk about two of the female companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the first one is Zawjatu Julaybib, the wife of Julaybib. And the second one is Fatima Bintul Khattab. So, who are these female companions? Let's dig in. Zawjatu Julaybib, the wife of Julaybib, radiyallahu anhuma, her name. Uh, was not known. So who is uh, who is this person she is known by? Zawjatu Julaybib. This is the wife of Julaybib radiyallahu anhuma. So who is Julaybib? His name was unusual, incomplete. Julaybib means small grown and it's the de, uh, diminutive form of the word jilbab the name is an indication that jilbab was uh, julaybib was small and short jilbab is the long uh, coat the long gown that the uh, woman wears so Julaybib is the shorter form. So it gives the in, impl, indication that it was a small and short, uh, even uh, of a dwarf-like stature. More than that, his describe, Julaybib was described as being the meme. And Damim in Arabic means ugly, very ugly, and deformed in a way or another. Even more disturbing for the society in which Julaybib lived, his lineage was not known. And there is no record of who his father uh, or his mother was. No, nobody knows about who his father uh, was, or who is his uh, mother even. So they even uh, don't know anything about his tribe. They know nothing about him. So Julaybib, could not expect any compassion or any help, any protection or any support from society that he he was he lived in. Because the society placed a great deal of importance on family and uh, on tribal connections. And we know nothing about him. So in this regard, all that was known of him was that he was an Arab. And as far as the new community of Islam was concerned, he was known as one of the Ansar. So the, the, this Julaybib, the disabilities under uh, which Julaybib lived would not would have been enough to have him ridiculed and chunned in any society, and in fact he was prohibited by by from anyone any person uh, uh, by by one person 
whose name was uh, Barza, he was prohibited even to enter his home, to enter his tent, his home. So uh, was there any hope for Julie being treated with uh, respect and consideration? No. Was there any hope for his finding emotional satisfaction as an individual and uh, as a man? No. Was there any hope for of his enjoying enjoying relationships like other, any other person? Relationships which are taken for granted? Again, no. What was, what about the position of the new society that was emerging under the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Was he insignificant also? We have to stop here. So just as he was aware of the great issues of life, who? Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was aware of everything around him, of everything. The Prophet wasallam was also aware of the needs and sensibilities of his most humble companions. So with Julaybi in mind, the Prophet wasallam went to one of the Ansars and he uh, uh, he he said, I want to have your daughter married. And the man said, How wonderful, how blessed, oh messenger of God. And he uh, what a delight to the to, to what a delight to us. So that was the reply of the Ansari, Ansari man. And uh with this Obvious joy and happiness, joy and happiness. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "I don't want her. I don't want your daughter for myself." And the man said, "Then for whom, O Messenger of Allah? Who who are you asking my daughter for? To to who is going to marry my daughter?" And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "For Julaybib." The Ansari man have been too shocked. He was too shocked to give his own reaction and to, to, to answer. But he said, I will consult with her mother. And uh, he went to see his wife. So the messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, uh, now wanted Julaybib to get married. And he chose the uh, young woman who he thought she is suitable for this uh, uh, man. So let's see what happened then. The, the, uh, the man said to his wife, the messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wants to have uh, your daughter married. And uh, she she was also thrilled. What a wonderful idea, she said. What a wonderful idea. What a delight for us. And uh, he immediately said he doesn't want to marry her himself. So she will not be the wife of the prophet. But he wants to marry her to Julaybib. So... What was the reaction of the mom? The mom was shocked. Do you lay He wants he wants our daughter to be the wife of Julaybi. No, 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 never, never, never to Julaybi. And she said she will not allow this. She, she said no, no, I will not let her marry Julaybi. So. The man got the answer and he was about to, re to leave and to go to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to tell him uh, of what his wife said. But the daughter who heard her mother's reply, she asked, who, mom, who, who proposed to bury me? 
and her mom told her of the of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam request for her hand to marriage to Julaibib. And when she heard that, that was the request that came from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that her mom absolutely opposed this idea. She was she was greatly disturbed. She said to her mom and to her dad, أَتَرُدَّانِ أَمْرَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Do you refuse the request of the Messenger of Allah صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَيْنَ تَذْهَبَانِ مِنْ قَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى How would you reply to Allah's verse? وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةِ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ It's not for a believing man or a believing woman when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger have decided a matter that they should have thereafter, they should have any choice about their affair. إِدْفَعُونِي إِلَيْهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَنْ يُضَيَّعَنِي Send me to him for Allah shall not he 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 certainly will not bring ruin to me. So this was the reply of a truly great female who had a clear understanding of what was required of her as a Muslim. She understood that that was the order of Allah, that was the order of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So she would not she would not question it. She would not reject it. She would not say no. So what, what a great satisfaction can a Muslim find in responding willingly to the requests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the requests of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in our life, when we obey Allah, we feel happy. When we pray, we feel happy. When we fast, we feel happy. When we do anything of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we feel happy. Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised great reward. But even though we do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the reward or because we want to get into, into paradise or we want to avoid her fire. No, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he deserves to be worshipped. So this female companion of the Prophet, whose name we do not even know, she immediately remembered the verse of the Quran that whenever Allah and his messenger have decided a matter, it's not. It's not for a believing person uh, to claim freedom of choice. So this is Allah's order. I'm going to follow it. This is Prophet Muhammad's order. I'm going to follow it. I'm going to do it. So this 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 verse that she remembered is um, in Surah Al Ahzab, Ayah thirty six. So we all have to understand this verb. We all have to remember this verb. This is this verse. So when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala puts us in any situation then we have to think. We have to accept Allah's orders. Because Allah's decree is going to happen, whether we like it or we don't like it. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَعَلَيْهِ السَّخَطْ Whoever, whoever uh, is pleased with Allah's order, then he will be pleased. But whoever is not happy is not pleased with Allah's order then he will be punished but Allah's order is gonna is gonna be fulfilled 
So this female companion was married by the prophet to Julaibib alayhi salam. And they lived together. They lived happily together. So, subhanAllah, imagine that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the matchmaker between these two, two companions of his. He chose her for him. What a blessing. What an honor for her. And she understood that this was an honor. And she didn't want to miss it. So she got married and she lived happily with her husband until he was killed in one of the expeditions where the, 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 he went and fought with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So at the end of the battle, the Prophet asked his companions, he went to the first group and he asked, have you lost anyone? And they replied um, by giving the names of their friends who were killed. They said, no. Then he asked the same question to another, another group. And he said, and uh, he said to, her, to them, have you lost anyone? And the other group said, no. So a third group said, no. And here Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, but I have lost Julaibib, search for him in the battlefield. So they searched and they found Julaibib beside seven of the non-believers whom he had killed before he killed, he, he himself was killed. So the prophet stood by him and uh, uh, he, he he went to the to the to where he was to where Julaibib was laying, and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad stood next to him, and he said, "Julaibib killed seven of the non-believers, and then he was killed. This man is of me, and I am of him. Innahu minni, wa ana min." MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Ya Allah, we ask you, we ask you to be of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask you to grant us the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the true love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that we would follow his footsteps, Ya Allah. So he repeated this. This man is of me and I am of him. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated this, uh, uh, these words twice or three times. The Prophet then took him into his arms. And then he himself, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, helped uh, in digging the grave. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, himself, placed Julaibib in his grave. So Julaibib and his wife uh, are not usually among the companions of the Prophet وسلم, whose deeds are sung and whose exploits are recounted with reverence and admiration as they should be. But with the little info that we, we know, we know about them. We see how humble human beings were given hope. They were given dignity by the Prophet وسلم, where once there was no only despair. So everyone refused, all, all, all uh, young girls refused the proposal of Julaibib for marriage. But the attitude of this unknown and unnamed Ansari female companion of the Prophet Sallallahu her, her, her attitude, how she readily ag agreed, she immediately agreed to be the wife of, of uh, a physically an attractive man. So this was the attitude which reflected the profound understanding of Islam. It reflected on her part the unimportance 
of personal desires and preferences. She did not care that Julaibib was not the husband on the white horse to propose for her. Everyone has special uh, expectations for the man who is going to propose. But she put all her desires on the side and she accepted him because of the request of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu so with this acceptance, with this attitude, this attitude reflected on her part a total disregard of social pressures also. She didn't care what would people say about her. She married the, the most ugly, the ugliest, the ugliest person. She didn't care about that. She cared about uh, Sayyidina Muhammad And above all, this marriage, this attitude reflected, what do you think? A ready, a ready and implicit confidence in the wisdom and the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in submitting herself to what he deemed good. So she knew that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, would choose the best. So this was the attitude of the true believer. So even if we do not understand the reasons behind some, some issues, this is how we should act. Complete adherence to the messenger of Allah, complete acceptance to the orders of Allah. This is how our life should be. So in Jalaybib, there is an example of a person who was almost regarded as a social outcast because of his appearance. What happened? He was given help, confidence, encouragement by Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, this is the result. He got the, uh, he deserved the commendation of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, he is of me and I am of him. So may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guide us all to the best of wisdom guide us all to to know what to answer when we are uh, asked for something for the sake of allah for the sake of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the wisdom so we fulfill his orders without any questions So may he give, keep us close to him. May he keep us close to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want to be like Julaibib. We want Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, this person is of me and I am of him. This was the story of the wife of Julaibib who we do not know even her name. A female companion of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whom we learn a lot from. May Allah be pleased with her. May Allah be pleased with, with, her, with her husband. And may Allah guide us to be like them. Moving on, we will talk about Another female character, another female companion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fatima bint al-Khattab. What does this name remind you of? Who do you remember when, when you hear bint al-Khattab? We remember her brother, Omar 
ابن الخطاب the courageous عمر but who was عمر before Islam who was he عمر was a headstrong young man of great determination he saw Islam as a threat to Quraysh and he became most violent and wild in his attacks on Muslims one day he decided that he has to put an end to the trouble so he decided to do something that that's so courageous so he took up his sword and headed to the Prophet وسلم, to his house so on the way when he was going there he was very angry and he came face to face with uh, one of the believers who believed secretly in the Prophet وسلم. so looking at his face he saw Amr's grim expression so he asked him where he was going and Umar immediately said I'm going to kill Muhammad okay the believer the believer sought to discourage him from his intent but Umar was deaf to any any arguments he noticing that there's no way of uh uh, making him uh, uh, away from his intentions or uh, changing his intentions he this this secret believer said to himself okay then i'm going to divert him by uh, uh doing something I, I i need to warn the prophet of the intentions of omar so he wanted to gain some time just to 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 warn Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So what did he say? He said, "Oh Umar, why not first go back to the people of your own house and set them to rights?" Now this was a shock to Umar. He said, "What people of my house?" And this. This secret believer said, your sister Fatima and your brother-in-law Sa'id, they both, uh, 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 they have both forsaken your religion and they are followers of Muhammad, of Muhammad in his religion. Omar, upon hearing this, he got so angry. He turned and he went straight to his sister's house. Uh, he, Omar, uh, was very angry. He wanted to go and see what's going on. He wanted to make sure that what he heard was correct. So, at, at the house of Saeed, uh, Sayyidina Saeed and uh, Sayyida Fatima, there was Sayyidina Khabbab ibn al-Arat. Khabbab often came to, to, to the house, or he used to go to the house of Saeed, uh, an, so to recite Quran to him and to Fatima. Anha. So he was with them uh, at the time when uh, when they they heard Omar's Omar's voice, so they got scared. Khabbab hid behind the corner of the house, and Fatima concealed the manuscript, the 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 page of the Quran that uh, they, that that uh, she had in her hand. But Omar had heard the sound of their reading, and when he came in, he said to them. What is this Hainama? Uh, what's this gibbering uh, that I heard? So they tried to assure him that it was only a normal conversation that uh, 
that he has heard, but uh, he insisted. He said, I heard it. It's, it's not a normal conversation. And he said, is it possible that you both have, that you both become apostates? Have you not considered the religion of your forefathers? Have you, have you abandoned it? And at this time, Saeed wanted to reason with Omar. He knows that Omar is a very strong, intelligent man. And he, if you reason with him, you can convince him. So Saeed said, have you not considered whether the truth is not to be found in your religion? Have you ever thought about that? So he was trying to reason with Omar. So Omar, instead of uh, understanding what uh, his brother-in-law was saying, he started to hit him and to kick him. And uh, when Fatima went to the, to the defense of her husband, which she, she wanted to defend her husband, Omar struck her a blow on her face. And uh, uh, Omar, Omar, what if the truth, the truth is not in your religion? I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So Fatima's wound was bleeding. And when Omar saw the blood, he was so sorry. He's a loving, a loving brother. So he was sorry for what he had done to her, to his sister. And, have, and having heard what she said, there was a change over him. And he said to his sister, give me that script which you have. And I, I, I myself want to read it. And we all know the story. Uh, Fatima, Fatima said to him, you are impure. And only the pure may touch it. Go and wash yourself or make ablution. And then come to me. Make wudu and come to me. So, as I just mentioned, there was a change in Omar at that at that moment. So he wore, he, he went and he washed himself. And he came to his sister and he said, Now give it to me. And she gave it to she gave the page to him. And on that page there was the uh, the ayahs, the verses, uh, the, uh, they were the opening verses of Surah Taha. And he began to read it. Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'ana li tashqa. And he kept reading until he reached, innani ana allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'abudni. Fa'abudni wa aqibi salata li dhikri. Verily, I Alone, I'm God. There is no deity but me. So worship me alone. And be consistent in prayer. So as to remember me. So. Hearing this. Omar. Omar is an eloquent Arab. So. He was thinking about the the, uh, the verses that he read and he said to his sister show me where Muhammad is so they went together they took him and they made their way to the house of Al-Arqab Darul Arqab and there 
they declared, he declared his acceptance of Islam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his companions rejoiced. Sa'id and his wife Fatima uh, were, were the immediate cause which led to the conversion of the strong and determined Umar. And this added actually Umar's accepting Islam added substantially to the power and the prestige of the emerging faith. So the Muslims were more powerful now with the Islam of uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab. So Fatima, with her strong character, with her strong belief, with her great love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the reason behind Umar's accepting Islam. So, if we go back a little bit, when Muslims were uh, still few in number, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma a'izza al-Islam bi ahadi al-Umarayn. Oh Allah, uh, I want one of the two Umars to be a Muslim. So they would give us strength. They would be a great support to, to uh, he would be a great support to Islam, uh, to us and to the Muslims. And when he said, Bi ahadil umarain with one of the Umars, he meant Umar, Amr ibn Hisham or Umar ibn al-Khattab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Umar ibn al-Khattab. So it was Umar ibn al-Khattab who got the blessings of entering the, under the folds of Islam. He was a great source of courage for the Muslims. So a sister was the reason for her brother to become a Muslim. This is how, how family ties should be. One seeing a mistake made by, a, by any family member should act for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Should act out of love to that sinning member. And why? Because as a family, members should love each other for the akhirah, not only for the dunya. So they should fear about each other. They want to, to meet all together in, in heavens. So they care for the akhira of each other. And here lies the, the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ad-deenun nasiha. Religion is to give an advice, and this advice should be only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be purely, the intention should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is what Fatima radiallahu anha did. So, Now, Fatima, they mentioned, did a great favor to her brother. She was with her husband, the reason for him to become a Muslim. So imagine these great female companions that we are learning about their stories. So with this session, actually, with this uh, meeting of us today, we come to, to the end of this series about the female companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The female companions around Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we shed some lights on the lives 
of uh, 21 female companions of the prophets throughout uh, this series. And we just mentioned a little bit about them due to the short time that we have. So 21 female companions we learned about. We learned some, something about them. Fatima bin Tusa'ad. Fatima bin Tusa'ad. About whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كانت أمي بعد أمي. She was my mom after my mom. She took care of him after his mom passed away. Rufayda al-Islamiyya. And when we hear her name, we remember her tent. Because she was a doctor. She was the doctor. She taught nurses around her. She, she, she took care of the wounded uh, um, uh, people in battles. She, her tent was blessed by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, this was our second uh, female companion that we talked about. Then we talked about Khadija radiyallahu anha, the mother of the believers. And we all know who this amazing mother of the believer was. She was given the glad tidings of a, a palace in, in uh, paradise. Then we talked about Zainab, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We talked about her sister Fatima, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We talked about Ashifa bint Abdullah. And we talked about Aisha bint Talha. Umm Ruman was the wife of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Radiyallahu an. And we talked about her daughter Asma bint Abi Bakr. And we talked about um and we talked about Umm Sulaim bin Tumalhan. We talked about Umm Ma'bad, who gave the most accurate description of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he looks like. We talked about Umm Kulthum bin Tuqba. We talked about Hind bin Tuqba. And about Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. We talked about Durra bin to Abi Lahab, the daughter of Abi Lahab and Umm Jamil, who were uh, who, who were known for everyone that they are of the people of Hellfire, but their daughter was a We talked about Al Khansa, radiallahu anha, Umm Salama, the mother of the believers, and we learned her dua. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati, wa khlufni khayram minha. Oh Allah, give me reward for, for this uh, uh, calamity that I am in, and replace me with a better one, with a, with a better thing. We talked about Barakah. Umm Ayman radiallahu anha, the nanny of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And today we talked about Julaybib's wife and Fatima bint al Khattab radiallahu anhum jami'an. So, from these amazing female characters, we learned a lot. And these companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Fatih Muhammadun Rasulullah walladhina ma'ahu ashidda'u ala al-kuffar ruhama ubaynahum tarahum ruka'an sujjadan yabtawuna fadlan min Allah wa ridwana simahum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood look at the, at the description at the Characters, at these characters whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. These are the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah is saying, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those with him are 
forceful against the disbelievers. They fought bad, badly with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Merciful amongst, the, amongst themselves. You see them bowing and prostrating in prayer, making sujood, making rukur, making sujood. They're seeking the bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure. What's their mark? Their mark is on their faces from the trace of prostration. There is light on their faces. They are happy with Allah. They are happy with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is how we all should be. So this is greatly illustrated in the characters of the female companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We talked about during this, this series. We have to follow their footsteps. We have to follow the orders of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ashabi kan nujum bi'ayyihi muhtadaytum uqtadaytum. My companions, my companions are like stars. My companions are like stars, whichever of them you, whichever of them. So my companions are like stars, whichever of them you follow. Whichever of them you follow, you will be rightly guided. Whichever you follow you will be rightly guided. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be like them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the love of his prophet and to unite us with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allahum to we ask him to give us the love of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allahumma salli ala habibika almustafa wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaykum